Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition. Today I'm going to give you an overview of the Miles Morales The Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus that just came out. We'll take a look at the inside, check out what it contains, and if it's missing anything. So stay tuned! It is finally here, the Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man collection. Probably the final collection by Brian Michael Bendis in the Marvel Universe now that he has a DC exclusive. Let's take a look at the front cover. And the back cover, I like that image of Venom. And the spine, kind of like that, okay. Now the inside without the dust jacket. It's kind of surprising that for a, such a popular series, and I would say that this is probably the best-selling series that the Ultimate Universe gave us, they only have three Omnis. And that's what it looks like without the dust jacket. Now let's look at the content here. And they only released like the first volume and then there was the Ultimate Spider-Man, Death of Spider-Man spoilers. Just the death of Peter Parker. And then this one, and that's it. And then you've got the original hardcovers that were collected, uh, 12 volumes of that. So I mean, that's the way I own them, and that's the way I probably would recommend anybody if you if you ever find them, because some of these are out of print, and they're also available in Ultimate Editions and in trade paperbacks. This is the table of contents, and kicking off with Ultimate Comics Spider-Man One. Gonna look at a little bit of the artwork here while I talk about what is included in here. So this includes Ultimate Comics Spider-Man 1 through 28. That's after the death of Peter Parker in Ultimate Spider-Man number 160. And then it has the crossover Spider-Man 1 through 5. That's where he meets the Peter Parker from the 616 universe. And it's got the Cataclysm Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 3. 1 through 3. And Ultimate Spider-Man 200 which is when they go back to the regular numbering system. And it's got Ultimate Spider-Man 1 through 12. And I think a little bit of the material from Ultimate Fallout 4, which is where Miles Morales first appeared. So I like the way that they include that in here because it just kind of fits into the story. Um, because issues 1 through 4 of the Miles Morales book is just him before he becomes Spider-Man. His Uncle, who is the Prowler, stole a spider from the Oscorp, and of course it accidentally bit his nephew, and that's why he's getting not just spider powers, but also like chameleon-like powers and scorpion-like powers. So he's able to blend in with his surroundings, and the only one that knows this is his buddy Gank, or Ganky, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And he was probably the biggest influence for the character of Ned in the Spider-Man Homecoming movie. But yeah, issues one through four is just him chilling out and finding out that he's got these spider-like powers. And it kind of happens as the final issues of Ultimate Spider-Man are going on where Peter Parker dies. And he even attends Peter Parker's funeral. And then this is part of the comic that leads into the Ultimate Fallout part. Issue four, where he is first introduced with this Halloween costume, Spider-Man. I kind of dig that. I like the way it was done. Then it goes back into the comics. I like the way they just inserted that without the cover. I thought that was cool. To say, I was not the biggest fan of Ultimate Spider-Man. I thought it was just a retelling of something that had been done better before. I really, really enjoyed this. I just got it yesterday and started reading it. And I couldn't put it down because I really like the character of Miles. I like the way he's introduced in here. You don't have to know anything about him. I mean, his uncle's the Prowler, who's a 616 character, but in this Ultimate Universe, it doesn't matter. And I like his family and his friend, and I like his relationship with Gwen, and even the clone of Spider-Man, Spider-Girl, Jessica Drew. I think it's really cool. A lot of dark stories in here, too. A little violent, but that's okay. Yeah, I like the relationship he has with his parents, his mom and dad. And one thing, oh my god, I, I I stopped reading Ultimate Spider-Man because I was just done with ult the Ultimate Universe. After Fallout, I just didn't care. So I've never read some any of these stories. 
and I have fallen back in love with Sarah Pacelli's artwork. That lady does not get enough credit. Holy crap, she's amazing. Just her attention to details and the way she draws Miles, I absolutely love it. And not just her, but also David Marquez. I can't, he's, he does more than half of this book. Um, but yeah, anyway, I really enjoyed what Brian Michael Bendis was able to do. I know I give him a lot of crap. I know I really bust his balls as far as being a really kind of crappy writer. I know people really, really like his stuff in Daredevil and Ultimate Spider-Man and Alias, but I was just never a big fan of his stuff. But this kind of changed my mind. This is the kind of Brian Michael Bendis I want. That and reading Man of Steel recently, which is a pretty good run so far. Um, yeah, but this is what I really like. I like this action pace. It may, he makes me care for the character of Miles and his family. There's a couple of heartwarming moments in here. I don't want to dive too deep into the spoilers, but here's a crossover with the 616 Spider-Man, Peter Parker, who is dead in the Ultimate Universe. God, yeah, Sarah Pacelli. What are you doing, lady? I think the last time I saw her do anything was the 616 Spider-Man Miles Morales story. I think she did like the first five issues and that was it. So I don't know if she's gone back to cartoon storyboard telling or what, but I really, really wish she was doing something else. Her Guardians of the Galaxy is about the only reason why, once again, I read that book because it's written by Brian Michael Bendis, but I don't know, this didn't feel like Brian Michael Bendis. It didn't even feel like Ultimate Spider-Man Brian Michael Bendis, and that's why I enjoyed it. I mean, it's loaded with action, it's loaded with humor, and like I said, at times it will make you tear up a little bit. I thought it was great. And what I usually what usually gets on my nerves about Brian Michael Bendis doesn't in this book, which is his dialogue. There are scenes in here where people actually feel like human characters and not scripted characters that are auditioning for some kind of sitcom. The story is smooth and entertaining and it never lets down. I'm three fourths of the way done and I was just this morning. So I can't wait to finish it out. I think it is a great jumping on point for new readers because it introduces the character of Miles and his whole crew. And you, you have to know a little bit about Spider-Man, but after all the movies and how many times the comic books have retold his origin, you really don't need that much more than that. And after 200 plus issues, this story kind of ends and it continues into the Secret Wars where Miles crosses over into the 616 universe. And this is where he is hanging out now. I'm just going to show you a little bit more of the artwork while I wrap this up. So I'm just going to go on the record and say this is probably my favorite thing that Bendis has written. I think it is excellent. My daughter just started reading Ultimate Spider-Man. So I am very excited for her to get to this point into the story, even though it's going to take her a little while. Although she's a fast reader like her mom, so it might take her a week to read all those volumes. As I was never really a fan of the Ultimate Universe, this book kind of made me a fan of the Ultimate Spider-Man Universe. And here's the crossover stuff here. Yeah, the Cataclysm stuff, which by this point, I wasn't even reading the Ultimate Universe, so I'm not really sure what was going on other than Galactus came and attacked the world. But they kind of give you a synopsis pages of what's happened and what's going on now. And yeah, and it kind of ends with To Be Continued in Secret Wars. And Secret Wars was the big crossover a couple years ago by Jonathan Hickman. Now let's look at some of the extras here while I talk about the only thing they probably could have added, which is probably the Cataclysm storyline, the Ultimate Comics Cataclysm, which was only five issues, I think. Would have made more sense, even though they had the Ultimate Spider-Man part in there, one, two, and three. I think it would have been cool to add that, and probably Ultimate the End. And maybe parts of Secret Wars where Miles shows up, like in issue three, I think. A couple pages in issue four. That would have been nice to have in here, too. To get you ready for the 616 Miles run. And there was another Spider-Man. This is cool. It's every single cover of Ultimate Spider-Man. And there was another Spider-Man miniseries where he teams up with Peter Parker again. But I haven't read that one, and it's not collected in here. And that pretty much sums up what is included in this omnibus. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If this is your first time watching and you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. That would be much appreciated.
Again, this was Omar, and don't forget to tune in to our weekly show every Thursday and our other weekly live show at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New Reader, Old Reader, and that is on Tuesdays. So check us out. Again, Omar signing off.